Welcome, my name is Julian Kunkel and I'm talking today about how to actually create a skill for the HPC certification forum. Please check out the other videos that we have in our channel to be acquainted with the HPC certification forums and its goals. Just a really quick short repetition of our goal. So HPC certification forum has one key goal that is the fine grain standardization of the HPC knowledge representation, which we call will lead to a HPC competence standard. All this information you find on hpc-certification.org. And now the purpose of this video is really how would you create a new skill if you find out that the current skill set isn't sufficient and as you may know, the HPC certification forums competence standard, it actually evolves. Details ca you can find under processes evolving of the standard. And we try to, for example, make one release in a year of the new standard. Right, let's not, let's not blur this talk today. Let's really look at these competences. Okay. First, what I did is I basically downloaded the Markdown repository in GitHub. And after I downloaded the repository, there is one particular file, which is a mind map file that I can use to get a quick overview of the skills if I'm not satisfied with the interactive navigation that we have as well. If you look here. We have also a wiki for the skills and so on, but I don't want to go into this detail. Really, we talk about the mind map real quick, and then we talk about how to actually build a, a markdown skill. Okay, so let's say my goal today, right? So Julian wants to create a net CDF skill, right? So this is actually quite vague. Right, but I find out maybe that the current skill tree doesn't have a net CDF skill. So what do I do? Maybe I'll have a look at this mind map. First, I need to understand the six core branches that we have in this skill tree. HPC knowledge, for example, covers all this fundamental concept all the fundamental concepts that you need for parallel computing that are more of theoretic nature. Then we have the branch of use, which covers pretty much the hands-on skill that you need to use those concepts in the practical sense, right? To produce some kind of output, I would say, on a really on a supercomputer or on a small machine with parallel computing. We have also an aspect of administration. So if it has to do to provide software um, to one or multiple users. It's in this branch. If it's about big data analytics, we created this new branch for subtree here. Then it is located here. We have one for software development. So that means how do I actually build software? And you have to contrast building a software with actually using software, right? So there are two different, these are two different aspects. And as performance is really important in high performance computing, um, we have also a subtree for performance engineering. And again, if your question is basically, how would I optimize my software or an environment to get the best performance, then the skill you are looking for is typically in this subtree here. So in each of the subtrees, we find, we can open them by clicking on the plus button. We find similar descriptions of of meaning of these skills. So let me go now for a second to our wiki for the skills. And in here, I open the skill tree and I say, well, I, I don't quite know what HPC knowledge is, right? Because I talked about it, but you may not be able to fully comprehend it. So here you get in the section background, you get the details, right? What I just said. So it's the theoretical knowledge, right? And you see the aims. 
And now you can go deeper and deeper in this tree. If I click on supercomputer, so HPC knowledge, we may need some knowledge maybe about supercomputers. I may want to know again, what is the background? And in this skill, this is one of the skills that is yet un incomplete. So we, we would need to specify again a background to make people understand what this sub tree of the skill tree is about, right? Like we saw, HPC knowledge is about theoretical knowledge, while use of the HPC is about um, this practical aspect of it. Uh, we would identify basically going down and down this route, we would identify the location where to place the skill. And let me show this in, in the mind map because I find this a bit more convenient today. Um, and I want to show as an alternative. So I go to HPC knowledge, supercomputers, for example, because this knowledge we are searching is about supercomputers directly. And it's in particular about input output of supercomputers. That's what NetCDF is. And then we would find IO layers. And in IO layers, there is a subskill middleware where ultimately we find NetCDF. So that is kind of what we discussed, what I discussed with a couple of um, members of the HPCCF, where we will store this new skill NetCDF. So what will this new skill NetCDF be about? Well, it will be about theoretical knowledge of supercomputers, in specific, I input output the different IO layers and in particular the middleware. Right? This is, and this kind of hierarchy with the numbering that you find here is, is K1, 3, 2, 4, 1. That will be the ID of this new skill. So I can immediately put down you know, the ID of the new skill, which is always part of the title, and I stored it already. As a draft here, so we see k one three two four one, and the dash b means it will be the basic skill level. We will also have intermediate and expert skill levels, but if as this skill doesn't exist, it's always a good idea to create a basic level. So people may ask, what is the difference between basic, intermediate, and expert? Well, basically, if you need to do deal with net CDF data. The basic skill should cover the things you need on a daily basis. And you know that is maybe 90% of what people need is in this skill. And what you need on a daily basis, you find in this skill. Okay? So in the intermediate level, you, f you find more arcane um, you know, aspects of the skill. You would find more arcane aspects um, like that would uh, not be needed for everyone, right? So it maybe is for a subset of users relevant that understand this basic level, but provides them more advanced capabilities. And the expert level, again, is probably a subset of this intermediate level where you would say, well, this is really only a subset of, this, of the people would need to know it. Another consideration when you create a skill let me point, bring this here, make some notes, is maybe to say that a skill should cover about 60, so 60 minutes or one hour, one hour to four hour training material. So it should be, it shouldn't be more coarse grain, right? So this is about the granularity, granularity of a skill. So if a skill is about, for example, 12 hour material, well, probably you are able to redefine the skill as a couple of skills, which each cover a couple of hours, right? That would be much preferable. Likewise, if you have a skill that only would be 10 minutes, right? If I say for NetCDF, right, why not create a NetCDF copy? Okay, there exists a command called NC copy, um, which you could use and and I could say, well, this skill should be about NC copy. But how much can you talk about this little tool? And who is actually does in need for such a skill? Likely, it isn't, you know, an, an hour of material. So you would come with the 
you would have the idea to actually merge skills together into a meaningful unit. Okay, in our case, I want to maybe talk about the NetCDF um, theoretic model. And so I prepared the section background. And there are a couple of more sections, by the way. All the sections that you need are defined again on the web page. Under competences, you see the definition of a skill and what it means in terms of each of these sections. Okay, so I add the next section background. Well, what I say here, the background actually serves the purpose um, to give people that are not quite familiar with the topic an overview what this is about. So if you are not familiar with NetCDF, you have no idea what it is, and you read this text hopefully, you have a basic understanding what it does and if it would be useful for you. Okay. So the background here is probably a bit brief, we could extend it a bit further, but it's pretty clear that you know, NetCDF describes multidimensional data and includes metadata describing the data itself. And we talk about in this skill about the data modeling aspects and some basic tools that come with this, uh, with, with NetCDF, because they're really aiding the understanding. Okay, so next you would have to create an aim section. Okay, and like we say here on the web page, the aim describes the purpose of the skill, but it doesn't include a list of what a practitioner will learn or do. So it's really about the high level purpose. And a skill has one to two aims. Well, we can have three, but uh, this is the general statement. So what do we want to do with NetCDF, okay? So maybe one goal that we want to um, communicate to users is we want to create, analyze, manipulate, and visualize NetCDF data. Well, maybe we want to utilize the core software ecosystem of NetCDF. What does it come with? That seems to be really fundamental. And why is this still, well, people may argue, why is utilization of some ecosystem, why is this still in this knowledge part? Well, as long as it's not really um, bound, I'd say, to the supercomputing environment, it's really only a subset of the information and training that we give, it, it is a good idea to bundle things together for now and later we can still, you know, create multiple skills if it turns out to be too heavyweight. But in this unit, what we thought about was, you know, 60 to 90 minutes maybe of training material and of a skill that makes coherent sense. Um, and it does make sense to talk about those tools because they really will foster the understanding of what CDF is. Okay, let me put, you know, a couple of more items, okay, that we have already um, created. And this isn't done, but I want to kind of take you with me uh, in this discussion of the skill. The next section is the outcomes, which actually means, stands for learning outcomes. This means it covers the skills and capabilities what, an, what a, a practitioner will be able to do or knows after ha possessing this skill. It is very similar and related to AIMS. However, AIMS is this high level overview, which gives you an understanding of what the skill is about and is generally understandable, while learning outcomes can be very specific and only understood from someone maybe who already has this skill to some extent. And this person can then go into these outcomes and check that he or she understands these different concepts and is able to kind of uh, verify that it possesses um, the skill. Uh, learning outcomes are so important because they are tied into the assessment. When we define uh, questions for the HPCCF, they must stick to one of those learning objectives or learning outcomes and um, test that the user can do this kind of questions related to this um, particular learning outcome. Um, so 
they must be very specific. So um, when you write these learning outcomes and when you contribute in the first lane, then you, can, you should click on the processes, competence standard, contribution, understand what it means, the contribution. You should understand the license terms. Basically, you contribute this to this, to the, any, any of your contributions will be um, integrated and you, sh you um, make sure that you uh, share it under the CC BY license that we then have in the HPCCF. Okay, we have also some guidelines for contributions that um, will grow over time regarding the language, regarding learning out outcomes. And there is one important aspect when you think about learning outcomes, that is the action verbs. So there exists uh, a taxonomy that has been uh, developed by Bloom and then extended by a lot of researcher. And you find uh, this taxonomy described on this page, one of the many pages. And there exists this idea of uh, different levels of understanding. So the lowest level is typically to remember something. So when you recite some knowledge, well, this is really low level and you find a couple of um, suitable action verbs here that could help you to, to write down and you want that someone remembers some fact. We have something about understanding, a level of understanding that which is higher than remembering. And at some point you want to apply some knowledge want to analyze it, evaluate it. And actually the ultimate level is to create something new based on a skill. So these are the highest, it's the highest level and this forms this taxonomy. You can read more about it. So let me check what we did actually here. So we said for the learning outcomes, design. So this is a proper action verb, designing, right? You will find this here under the create so that's the highest level right that the user must be able to do so design and implement which is related to a computer science term a netcdf data model for netcdf using dimensions variables attributes and coordinating coordinate variables like i said you may ask what is the dimension variable attributes and so forth doesn't matter if you have been taught what it means you sh will understand the language used in here. And uh, that's basically the idea of a learning outcome and the difference to the aims. So is this actually, first question I have to ask me, is this actually the right level? So do I want that a user is able to design a data model? Yeah, this, this skill will be about, um, you know, the data modeling aspect, like I said, that was my purpose. But maybe the word implement, right, isn't quite clear what it means. So, um, yeah, maybe I should delete that. So, if the learning outcome is designing a NetCDF data model for NetCDF data using, um, for NetCDF, yeah, okay, it should, should just say this, design a NetCDF data model for data using dimensions, variable, assembly, and coordinate variables. That sounds reasonable. Often what you find when you write a learning outcome is that you restrict this to some extent, right? You could say, for example, um, you know, um, for up to five variables or something like that, right? Th this kind of reduces um, the scope or gives the scope for the learner what it means. Because y you can say, well, you must create a data model that is, you know, extremely complicated, right? And that wouldn't be quite what we mean in this skill in it because it's on a basic level. But maybe we, sh we should say design a, a NetCDF data model um, for, you know, um, simple, uh, for a simple data set, okay? For a simple data sets, note that the term simple data set isn't quite articulated what it means. Um, so it may be more specific. Like I said, you could add some scope to it, what means simple, but for the time being, we leave it this way. I think that's quite, uh, as it's quite reasonable. 
and a quite good score. Okay, the next thing is, I see this, is, well, we want to judge, let's see, where is judge here, right, let me search, judge is in evaluate, okay, so note that it is, it does make sense to have a skill that asks for these different levels. It's quite natural though, that when you have a, a skill that is on the level of creation, I mean, when you have a learning objective, this covers the create aspect, that to create something new, you all typically have to <laughs> remember the facts about it. So it doesn't make sense to ask multiple, um, repeatedly the same kind of knowledge on different levels, right? If I say, tell you, you know, remember, like, like define what is cooking, and then I say, please create, you know, a cake, um, it kind of covers, you can't create a cake without knowing cooking. So it doesn't make sense to repeat yourself too much in the learning objectives, but I find also that it sometimes is useful to repeat to some extent. Uh, and here we see, here we want to judge uh, when to model, when to use, when to model some data using a variable or using attributes. In, in NetCDF basically you have to make this decision how to model your data. And there's these two options, using it as variables or attributes, and you have to make the decision. Right? But this is again, judging, well, is quite, um, how to say, generic. So we have a wide scope. How do you judge this, right? Um, based on, you know, criteria. So you, you should have some criteria in mind and then you make this decision. So maybe we should say justify when to model data using a variable or attributes based on criteria. So that you can come up basically with some criteria and say, you know, I do it because this is this way and this is this way. So I make the choice to do it as a variable. Right, the next thing is NetCDF has also this data model. Maybe what you should describe is the, the data model itself. So where is describe? Well, describe, it's actually to remember, okay? So describing is a very basic one. So if I think about this list of skills, maybe it's actually a good idea to sort it a bit, to start with very basic skills, outcomes, learning outcomes. Right. Um, sorry that it sounds a bit confusing in times. I, I basically um, create this on the fly with you here, like I said, to take you on board of my thinking process. I think that's valuable and we will create in the later period a better video. But for now, um, I'm, I do it this way. Okay, so let's start with the next element, okay? So we, we, we had here, apply features of the enhanced data model, NetCDF4. Okay, that sounds reasonable. How about we should describe these features of the enhanced data model? So we describe the classic data model first, then we describe the features of the enhanced data model, which includes of the data enhanced data model, okay? Groups, multiple unlimited dimensions and new 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 types including user defined types that sounds good to me so we have basically two descriptions here right so we you have the basic model and you have an, an enhanced model and then at some point you have to justify how to model one of these or the other and you have to design a data model okay good so far, we actually talked about create. We have talked about analyze. Aha. But we haven't talked about data. To create, analyze, manipulate, and visualize. Um, create, analyze, manipulate. Yeah, I would say to create, analyze, 
that's what we do and analyze a data model for NetCDF. That's what we actually do. And then we utilize the core software ecosystem of NetCDF. Uh, that's what we're actually doing. Okay. So the next um, learning outcome is a bit more generic. It says to work with the CDL text notation for NetCDF objects and data. Okay. What does work mean? That's a good question. And actually you find it isn't in these action verbs because working with something is the same idea as saying understand. If you understand something, it doesn't enable you to do something, right? So it's really tough. That's why the word, the term understand, to understand is not part of an action verb because understanding doesn't help you, right? To do something, right? You can classify something. That's a, some, you know, that shows some understanding, but it isn't the same as to understand. Okay, here it says to work with the CDL text notation. Yeah, this is, it isn't quite um, clear. Um, basically what it means is you have this NetCDF model. The NetCDF model is equivalent to a representation, a textual representation, which is the CDL text notation, okay? So basically maybe we should add this here a little bit. Um, allows to describe uh, and provides a notation for modeling um, the CDL notation for modeling um, data uh, for describing a data model. That sounds better. Okay. Mm. So um, so basically, actually what we are doing here, when we talk about designing an FCDF data model, in CDs we, we do it in CDL, right? So that's actually, because it wasn't clear how you do you design a data model, right? How do you write it down? So now it's clear and it makes sense to me. So next we say here, mm, perform basic operations using the inbuilt utilities. Okay, let's check. So you see this, um, the current definition just to mention that you saw that I copied and pasted was deliberately copied and pasted from some collaborative um, brainstorming with uh, colleagues. Um, and now I want to do this more optimized pass over it um, to discuss it here, like I said. Okay, so this wasn't on purpose, not a final um, document to make sure that you can follow my thinking process. And of course, please add a comment underneath if you disagree with one of these decisions. This isn't yet done. Um, it's just in the process, this step. Okay, so the word perform you won't find this word because again, the word performing isn't clear, right? What can you perform, right? It's like, you know something, right? Knowing doesn't help. It doesn't make clear what it means, right? Um, I'd say what we do, and you find the term ap in apply is actually apply. Apply basic NetCTF utilities um, to um, like we said here, you know, analyze and manipulate here to create, analyze, to create and analyze net CDF files, right? This is a bit more specific. Now, if I would say, if I would not provide more details, the question would be, what are those basic utilities? And if I write questions about it, for the examination, it wouldn't clear, wouldn't be clear at all what is tested, right? What is this basic utility? Is it somewhere defined? So I need to be more specific here, right? Um, so we list here the tools, in fact. Um, so we describe here the tools as a sub item. So we have NC dump 
and well this must be now again action verbs so this here just says the tool reads an HDF file and outputs text so we could do that um, generally speaking but the language here says you know it says what ncdump actually does it doesn't say what the user is able to do okay so I would um, you know rephrase this um, you know like um, you know execute is execute let me check execute is not a verb so it's not good right um, so let's see what could we use let, let's think about it right you could think in these categories right understanding remembering analyzing so this is actually I would say really it is apply isn't it so um, but it yeah the word examine looks good right so examine the metadata, the CDL um, data model of a file using, and it's clear that the file means NetCDF files because we said this before, using ncdump. Right, that looks good, right? So we examine the data model of a file using ncdump. So I, you know, it means that a practitioner should be able to kind of call this tool and interpret a little bit what what get out of it right and if this tool would be very complicated and has a lot of options I would probably go into details and say um, you know how it works but here we actually do this because examining the data model oh yeah and we can say enter data of a file using ncdump because and with ncdump you can look at the data model the CDACL data model and the data differently okay that looks good okay the next one is already quite good, I think. Read the text file in CDL format and generate a NetCDF data file. That is quite interesting. So how we, we write it differently? Generate, because that's what the user can do afterwards. Generate, yeah, yeah. Generate a NetCDF file using Antigen um, using Antigen, which reads um, generate. Okay, how about this? Generate a CDL text file that gener generate a net CDF file. Right. Mm from a CDCL file using ng-gen. That is, I think, reasonable. Okay, the next one um, is copy in a file. So I would say probably the word convert. Yep, here we go. Understanding, right? You need to convert something to something else, but actually we run a tool, so we are not converting it, it ourselves, right? But um, the tool does it that way. So, mm, convert a netcdf file from one binary format to another, optionally changing compression and chunk size, changing compression here, using nc copy. That sounds reasonable, yeah. Uh, this, and the final one is, um, is the word display, visualize, Yes, visualize exists. So visualize um, net CDF data using NC. So um, right, arguably, like I said, the, the terms generate, convert, and visualize and examine these action verbs they are not done by the practitioner itself. However, the practitioner does those tasks using specific tools. So now let's do a quick check. Check. So we have here in the first block we have four uh, outcomes that actually cover this data model aspect, and then we have we talk about applying NetCDF utilities to create and analyze NetCDF files. Yeah, these are covering the second aim. So that looks reasonable. We have not too many outcomes. 
um, about a fair selection. And uh, could I have to think about how much time would I think does it need to train someone in this? Well, I probably think an hour is is appropriate, depending on how deep I go. But with this applied part, it's I think that's suitable. So the last, so that would be for me, you know, fine. And of course, I'm not the only one who would make such decisions. Um, in the HPCCF, we are many. It's a community of people that look into such skills. And if someone from climate and weather, for example, says, oh, I believe, you know, for a basic skill level, you know, visualizing of data, you know, is too much. You don't need it. Well, like I said, a basic level should cover everything that you use on a daily basis. And if this is too much, then we would probably in the next revision move this to an intermediate level or even to another section. Okay. So the last section in the skill is the subskills. And um, well, basically these are references across the skill tree. So it is possible, for example, to say, I have here the HPC knowledge, I have NetCDF. And um, in fact, in software development, you need to, sometimes you need to write a program that actually analyzes or creates a data model. So there is also in, in software development a programming concepts for HPC um, at the moment. We have something about parallel programming IO middleware is NetCDF. So the term concepts um, on this path might be um, a bit confusing. That's where we organize at the moment. But you see here we have NetCDF. NetCDF comes with an API. How do you code this? Is here. And here I could basically create a link to the HPC knowledge because it's pro basically clear if you want to program such an, you know, the net CDF, then yeah, well, you should have understood the concepts of the data model. That's the idea of having this tree and that's the idea of having um, the links. I hope um, my discussion kind of helped you. Let me give you, um, let me discuss one item in another skill with you briefly to conclude this um, video. So under using cluster operating systems, we have shell script. Okay. And in shell scripts, um, and we have command line interface. Okay. So in command line interface, you see again, a nested list of items here. In, in the learning outcomes um, with the different outcomes. Here we have, I mentioned again, list a set of basic programs and their tasks. So a user should be able to give you a list of basic programs, which are here well specified. And it should, for each of them should say, basically be able to say what this tool does. Okay. Here you see that the sub list, it doesn't contain any action verbs anymore because that's clear by the parent um, learning outcome, which is list the set of basic programs and the task, right? Which is different to what we did here. Here we said, you know, apply basic NetCDF view to this to create and analyze NetCDF files, which was generic. And then we said, you know, added this action verb, right? The reason is that here we are more specific on a higher level. If we would be able here, if we would mention to you here, that you should be able to use those tools, like use the tool kill, then you should probably, we should be specific to say what we do with it, right? You can't just say apply, you know, kill um, or apply sleep. But in that sense, I, I will now apply um, exit, which is the only one that I can actually apply. And uh, thank you for listening. And we are really looking forward to um, have more videos, more education videos. And if you find this helpful, or even if you don't, um, add your critical comment underneath and we produce an improved version. And with this, I actually improved also the skill a little bit and I give this back to my colleagues. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, please subscribe to our channel of the Virtual Institute for IO, which also hosts the HBCF. Thank you.